What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you guys about a topic that falls under the basic side of home brewing, but if you're not careful can get kind of expensive and uh, you can get wrapped up in the details of it. So what we want to talk about today is how to measure your specific gravity and to calculate the alcohol by volume that you get in your home brew on four different budgets. So in order to talk about how to calculate the alcohol, we first have to talk about something called specific gravity. It is a form of expressing the density of sugar in water. Uh, which is essentially what beer wort is, the pre-fermented beer. To calculate the alcohol by volume, you need two measurements. You need, first of all, an original gravity, which is the measurement of how much sugar is in the wort before you add any yeast to it, and a final gravity, and that's a measurement of how much sugar is left in the wort after the fermentation has completed and yeast have consumed those sugars and turned them into CO2 and alcohol. When you have those two numbers, it's a very simple plug and play calculation to get you your alcohol by volume or ABV. So that begs the question of how do you get those two numbers in the first place? Well, you really have a bunch of different options available to you and depending on your budget, you can choose one that costs $5 or one that costs $350. And that's the main point of this video. I'm gonna give you four different options for four different budgets to measure your specific gravity with varying levels of precision accuracy, pros and cons per technique, and so hopefully I can help you make an informed decision. If any of these products at any point in time interest you during the video, I will have dropped links down below in the description box for all of them. So when you're measuring your specific gravity, that's going to require you to take a sample of wort or beer, and you're gonna to need to treat it accordingly to take an accurate measurement. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is decarbonate it. So there's a number of different ways to do that, but you wanna pull the CO2 that's in solution, even during fermentation, there's gonna be dissolved CO2 in there. Um, you wanna pull that CO2 out of solution so that you have a much more accurate reading. You really wanna decarbonate your sample as much as possible. Usually that just means shaking it up a lot getting that CO2 to express out of it. Usually I just like to pour it back and forth between two containers, uh, using a hard pour to get that CO2 to come out. Uh, that usually works pretty well. The second thing you're gonna wanna take into account is temperature. The temperature of your sample can throw off the accuracy of your reading, depending on what you're using. There's gonna be a calibration temperature that's associated with the equipment that you're using to measure specific gravity with, and you want your sample to be as close to that temperature as possible. Sometimes it's just not gonna happen though, so you should try to make sure you know the temperature of the sample and then plug it into a temperature correction calculator, which will help you get the most accurate measurement possible. The first tool on the list is this. This is a hydrometer. This is the cheapest, simplest option. Usually these things run anywhere between like five and $10, and they're generally very accurate. Hydrometers are pretty much the easiest way to measure specific gravity. In order to use this, all you need is a basically a large tube that will hold the entire length of the hydrometer plus your sample. So you'll need to take a sample of wort, float the hydrometer in it, and then read the reading uh, on the hydrometer, which will show you your specific gravity. These are typically calibrated around 60 Fahrenheit or about 15 and a half degrees Celsius, um, which means that you're generally gonna need to take some sort of temperature correction into account here. So for pros on a hydrometer, they are very, very cheap. Um, these things are about five to $10. It's really a good idea to buy a bunch of them. They're very accurate provided you know the conditions of your sample, and they will also provide you a very accurate measurement both before fermentation and after fermentation, which not every tool can do. However, for cons, they're very fragile. They're made of glass, typically. There are some plastic options out there, though, so that's not gonna apply to every hydrometer. Like I said before, typically you're gonna need to take a temperature correction factor into account, especially when measuring during the brewing process, during the, uh, during the mash, for example, you're gonna need to let that sample cool all the way down before you can get a good measurement on it. In addition to that, they really do require you to take up a large volume of liquid. Uh, usually a sample for a hydrometer is anywhere between four and eight ounces of liquid. So if you're taking multiple measurements over the course of a fermentation, you are gonna end up losing a lot of final volume just through the practice of taking consistent measurements. That brings me to the second item on our list. This is a refractometer. So for a refractometer, um, this is a device that basically uses the way that light passes through a liquid to determine the sugar content of it. Uh, it's a lot of science there, really fancy stuff, really interesting stuff, but I'm not gonna get into exactly how it works. Using the refractometer is actually really simple. You place a small drop of sample onto the surface of the refractometer here, and you take this little uh, flap here and put it over top. What that does is it spreads the liquid out in a very, very thin uniform layer across the surface of the, the lens here. And then you hold it up to a bright light. 
look through it and you'll be able to see a measurement reading. Most of them come with some sort of automatic temperature compensation in them that's relatively accurate and easy to use. When you're taking a sample with a refractometer, it's typically an instant reading and it requires a, a minuscule amount of wort to uh, actually measure it. Now, there's a couple of precautions to be aware of when you're using a refractometer. The first is that this is going to take a different reading if there is any alcohol in the sample at all. So if you're looking at post-fermentation readings, this is not the device to use because depending on the amount of alcohol, depending on the original gravity of the beer, there's going to be a skewed reading there. These are very accurate pre-fermentation, but I tend not to use them post-fermentation simply because of that factor. Now there are calculators out there you can plug the numbers into, plug the uh, original gravity and the fermentation statistics into it, it will give you a conversion formula uh, for a post-fermentation reading, but it's a little too much hassle for me. The other thing about a refractometer too is that it's going to be uh, a slightly different reading depending on the actual color of the wort or the beer that you're measuring. So basically before you take any measurements with your refractometer, you want to look into something called a wort correction factor. And this is also going to be different for every unique refractometer that you buy. So to establish your wort correction factor, get like a good dark gold to medium red colored wort that you can find and verify the actual gravity of with a hydrometer and then measure the same exact wort at the same time with a refractometer. Find out what the difference is there in calibration and then adjust accordingly. Establish that once and you're generally good for the rest of your beers, but you will wanna make sure you make a slightly different adjustment for a pale wort versus a dark wort uh, when you're using a refractometer. So the refractometer, this one comes in around about $35, but they can get kind of expensive depending on additional features. So for pros and cons, it's an affordable piece of equipment. It uses virtually no liquid for the sample, which is awesome. It will also give you a very accurate reading that you don't necessarily need to correct for temperature. So for cons on it, it's a little fussy when it comes to calibration. There's a lot of calculations and procedures you're gonna have to go through at first um, just to get used to it. And also you can't use it post-fermentation um, as effectively as you can pre-fermentation. That brings us to our next tier, which is actually gonna be slightly different than the other three products that I have here lined up. This is a wrapped pill from Kegland. It is a floating digital hydrometer. This is a very similar product to something like the Tilt or the Eye Spindle. They all fall into the same category of floating hydrometers. What this does essentially is it's, it floats in the wort as it ferments. As it ferments, it detects a slight change in the density of the wort. It actually causes the angle of this hydrometer to change hence the term PILT for the American version of it. It has a really nice ability to track the changes in specific gravity over time and temperature for your fermentation. Depending on which version of this you end up with, you're using either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to transmit a signal out of your fermenter to a smart device of some kind so that you can see exactly how the fermentation goes over time. It's really cool to watch this and to see it over time. It does provide some really interesting data. One of the best parts about this is that it doesn't require you to take any samples of wort at all, and it just stays in your fermenter the entire time, so you never need to open your fermenter to actually check on what the gravity is doing. It's a pretty cool concept, and it works reasonably well. Sometimes, depending on how vigorous the fermentation is, the uh, readings from this can get thrown off a little bit, especially due to Krausen. It just affects the way that these things tilt in the wort over time. Sometimes you can get a bad reading. So usually if you're using these, it's good to just confirm uh, when you have completed fermentation with a hydrometer, a refractometer, or something else. Of these floating hydrometers, the Rat Pill is really the cheapest one. This comes in around 60 bucks on AliExpress if you wanna buy it in the United States. Tilt owns the patent to floating hydrometers in the US, so you have to buy from an international seller um, if you wanna get one of these in the United States. The Tilt is about $200. There's a big range in there of about 60 to $200, depending on which system you're using. If you're pretty savvy with electronics, you can also build one of these yourself. So pros in this one, it's easy to use, it tracks your fermentation over time, and it transmits that data to a really nice tracking tool. If you like data on fermentation and analyzing it, this is definitely gonna be up your alley. Also, it doesn't require you to pull a sample. It doesn't require you to open your fermenter at all. That's also really nice just considering that sometimes that's an oxidation hazard. So for cons on it, they can get kind of expensive depending on which kind of floating hydrometer you choose. And also they may have some potential calibration issues or issues measuring fermentation gravity accurately, um, depending on, again, the situation. So just always good to follow up with a separate reading from a different device. And that leads me to our final device here to talk about. This is the Anton Parr Easy Dense. 
which is basically a lab grade level of hydrometer. Um, I've done a separate review video on this particular piece of equipment. If you're interested in checking out more details on it, I'm just gonna do a very brief overview in this video. This is the most expensive of the four hydrometers that I've shown you today. These usually come in anywhere between about $250 to $350, depending on whether they're on sale or not, whether they're second hand or not. This is really the thing that I use the most often now to measure specific gravity with. This is really neat because it's just such a precision level instrument. You know that the measurement you're taking is gonna be correct. Um, it generally ignores temperature, which is really nice too. It also comes with this app, which you can use to kind of track the progress and save data from different batches in uh, just to kind of see how things go. It does an automatic alcohol calculation for you. It tells you what your attenuation was, all that good stuff. Um, very useful information. And it uses a very small sample size, which is good. Very easy to clean, uh, also unfortunately very easy to break. So for pros in this one, I'd say that is absolutely no doubt about its accuracy. You know exactly the measurement that you're getting. It also has a very small sample size, which is good for you know making sure you don't end up using too much wort. It gives you an instant measurement that goes to your phone and it has a really nice app that goes along with it. I like all of those things. Again, see the review video for more details and all that. For cons, it's stupidly expensive and it's really easy to break this. If you just drop it from here, you're gonna break the internal tube. So just uh, be careful with that if you are purchasing one of these. At the end of the day, no matter what you're buying, you're gonna be doing the same thing with it. And whether you're going with a $5 hydrometer or a $350 Easy Dense, all that matters is that you know what you're doing. The, the biggest factors are how much does convenience in measurement matter to you, or does it matter to you if your measurement is off by like 0.002 specific gravity points? Do you want to have to plug things into calculators or do you want to just kind of see it as it is? Depending on how much those factors matter to you will probably dictate how much money you spend on one of these solutions. So if you liked the video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe for more info like this. Let me know in the comment section down below, what is your preferred method for measuring specific gravity? Let me know, is there something that I did not discuss today that should have been included in this type of video? Let us know in the comments so we can all learn a little bit more. If you want to support the channel, there's a variety of ways to do so. The, one of the best ways is to check out my merchandise store that's down below in the description box. A bunch of different designs down there. I get about 30% of that sticker price, so it does help quite a bit if you buy something. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon supporters are helping drive the production behind this channel, and I've made a lot of really good beneficial changes due to their support, so thank you to them. I also have channel memberships now, so just for a couple bucks a month, you get to stand out from your peers. You get these little badges, basically, um, and you get a couple extra perks. So check out the join button that is next to the subscribe button if you're curious about that. I also have an Amazon store, so if you're interested in any of the brewing gear that I normally use, if it's available on Amazon, it's gonna be on that store that includes all four of the things that we talked about here today. So check that stuff out if you're interested in some equipment. I generally won't put it on that store if I don't personally recommend it. If you wanna follow me in more than just YouTube, I'm also active on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, so check that out for some more frequent content updates. You get to see what's coming to the channel soon. Last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. I really appreciate you watching to the end of the video. Until the next one then, cheers. We got dogs, construction, screaming townies, and airplanes all going off at the same time.